Ryan, what we talked about last time <laughs> is if we look at this hyperbola, all right, let's go over now kind of the characteristics of hyperbola because there is some different names that now we're going to be dealing with, all right? So we know we have the center, all right? And we're going to have our two vertices. That's going to remain the same, all right? So we're going to have our center and we're going to have our two vertices. Um, but now remember that on a hyperbola, our graph is now going to focus away or shoot away from the center, right? So they're not going to make an enclosed shape. Then the next thing, Sadiq, that we look at is now, since they focus away, we know now that the fo foci are now inside of the parabola, so they're going to be farther away from your center. Okay. So there's a couple last things that we need to go through. Now, for an ellipse, we talked about a major axis and a minor axis. Well, our distance of our b, which I need to um, So if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about this, just like, a, just like an ellipse, our distance from our center, so our center is still going to have the form h comma k. That's not going to change. The distance from your center to your vertice is still going to be a. All right. The distance from your center to your foci is still going to be, sorry, not b, c. All right. And there's also going to be covertices, which is going to be a distance b. All right. Then now we need to kind of look at also what are going to be the names. Because remember, on ellipse, we had a major axis and a minor axis, right? So the distance from a over to a is what we call our transverse. axis. It equals 2a, just like the major axis. Yep. And then from our b to b this is what we call our conjugate axis, which equals 2b. All right. Then there's one last thing that we need to go over, which I have on my horizontal. Yeah. Um, so now there's one last thing we need to talk about is, ladies and gentlemen, for a hyperbola, we now have the addition one over. No. Well, our center is supposed to be like this, so. That's supposed to actually go through the center. Nope. If you guys remember our dotted lines for chapter, um, for chapter 9, we had our dotted lines. We used them to apply to asymptotes, right? Where your graph is going to approach. Well, guess what? These are your asymptotes as well. So we also, for a hyperbola, are going to have to know what asymptotes. And the equation for asymptotes are going to be y equals k plus or minus b divided by a times x minus h. I believe it is the same one. Yeah, OK. OK? So if you're given your k, your b, and your a, and your x minus h, then you can go ahead and find the asymptotes. Now, Notice, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing right now is I'm giving you everything for a horizontal. For the vertical, things are going to change. And the last thing I just need to do is, what does this equation look like? What is the equation of the hyperbola? How is it different than a ellipse? So the last information is our equation. And the equation for a hyperbola that has a horizontal transverse axis 
is going to look like this. Before, ladies and gentlemen, we had x squared minus h plus y squared minus k, right? So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're always going to be doing is now you're always going to have a squared minus b squared. Remember denominator, whatever was larger, that's what we, or whatever number was that's what we put under. Like if, if a we put if it was a if our major axis of symmetry was horizontal, then we put the larger number under the x. If it was vertical, we put the larger number under the y. That was for an ellipse. Do you guys remember that? So whatever was larger, whatever axis symmetry we want, our axis major axis we want to use, we'd put that larger number either under the x or the y. Now, I don't care which number is larger or not. Your a is always going to be first. It's always going to be a minus b, always. Okay, it's always a minus b. So an ellipse, a was always the larger of the two denominators. Now a is always going to be first. So it's a squared minus b squared. So now we need to determine, well, what is going to be up top? Is it x minus h or y minus k? When you have a horizontal axis, therefore, your x goes over your a. And there's your formula. Okay? Boom. That's it. Okay. So, I don't have a lot of time, guys.